Uh, my name is Chris Chalmers, I work with in the public sector team and I look after our ISV customers and uh, who are providing solutions, off the shelf solutions to customers in the public sector who you know, need to solve specific business problems and we're helping them to migrate to the cloud and to provide additional benefits to those customers through doing that. I'm joined today by um, three very special guests. Guys, if you'd like to join me on the stage. Let's take a seat. I'll um, give the guys a second to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their products, uh, their projects. Um, but as Patrick mentioned, this session is about large scale migrations and transformations. And we're very lucky to have these three customers who've chosen to join us today to tell us a little bit about what they've done, the experiences they've had. So first we have Florin from the European Commission. Florin, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and the project you're working on? Yes, so uh, I'm uh, working as IT service manager at the European Commission, uh, dealing uh, with the content management in the data service unit. In uh, our sector, we are dealing mainly with the public web uh, uh, presence of the European Commission. We have, uh, at the moment, more than 150 public websites implemented in Drupal, with a uh, specific distribution we have next to Europa. And along with this, we are managing a very large number of other public websites in various other technologies. So we have wikis, we have uh, WordPress, we have other technologies. Uh, the web president of the European Commission has gone through a uh, very uh, long uh, digital transformation in the last years in order to focus on providing a more coherent uh, and uh, user-oriented, uh, cost-effective uh, uh, presence. What I will mainly focus uh, today is on a specific uh, website, Euraccess, that was transformed uh, a couple years ago and now is hosted in uh, the cloud with uh, AWS. We do have uh, a large number of, uh, quite a large number of other sites in uh, various cloud solutions with, uh, using the current cloud framework. We have uh, access to various cloud providers. And one other uh, side that I would like to uh, point out, even though I'm not going to talk about this, uh, is the JoinUp. That is a uh, collaboration platform that is providing uh, uh, reusable uh, uh, and it's uh, encouraging uh, reusability of shareable solution for IT in the public administration, business and citizens. So anyone in the public is encouraged to check their site. It's a lot of solutions that you can use for implementing your own and providing better uh, value for uh, uh, better service for the citizens. Okay, so. Cool. All the best. Thank you very much, Flo. Thank you. Um, Philip, if I could turn to you and, and ask you, this is Philip Clegg, who is the CTO, one of the co-founders from um, Mirrorweb. Philip, could you tell us a little bit? Yeah, sure. Try again? No. No. I'm the luck one. <laughs> So uh, Miro is a web and social media archiving company. We, um, we provide web and social media archiving uh, to a number of uh, different organisations. Um, we've got a very strong uh, presence in the public sector. Uh, we provide the UK government uh, web archive, which is a, quite a large archive that's publicly available through the UK National Archives. We also provide um, a similar service to the UK Parliament. Or these are both available online. Um, we also do web archive for a number of um, other public sector organisations, although those aren't public archives. So what I was going to talk about today is, is the, the transition of the UK government web archive, which is a 120 terabyte archive, um, from a traditional data centre into the cloud. Um, yeah. That's fantastic. Before you pass it back, does, does, you, does your mic work, um, Bert? Yes. Yes, excellent. Excellent. So, and Bert, thank you. And, Bert Wayne, uh, Bert Wayne from the Agenskap Fagens of Verkeer. We can have a care, yeah. um, the, uh, the Flemish government and uh, road and uh, traffic agency. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bert, thank you very much for joining us. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your project? Um, my project is um, at the agency. I'm responsible for um, uh, more or less keeping the IT running that uh, supports the, um, the, business pro the administrative business processes at the agency. Um, back in 2015, 2016, we migrated all of our uh, business applications to AWS. Um, it's a very diverse por portfolio of, uh, of applications, uh, running from uh, the database with all of the, uh, the details about the, all of our roads in, in Belgium, but everything under, around, and over the, the, the roads. 
uh, written to uh, other applications that um, really um, like uh, the, uh, a road control application, which uh, which is uh, which is used by um, by road controllers, road inspectors. So that these are people. I guess it's like more or less uh, 300 people in the, in the agency that really go on the roads and try to to find all kind of issues on the road, like uh, traffic signs that are. Uh, uh, that have fallen down or are broken or pits in the road and all the kind of stuff. And they, with a tablet, they take a picture of it, they submit it to the backend, which is an AWS. Uh, and from there on, administrative people work on those cases and, and, and send those, uh, send those uh, make, make like, uh, uh, offers for, for, for those cases and send them to contractors in order to get those issues uh, fixed as soon as possible. Um, next to uh, next to the, the, the really the applications that are used by our employees, we also have a website that's uh, melpenswegen.be. It's for now it's uh, until until Monday it's still an old-fashioned website that's running as an old old sourcer, but also that one we just ported it to, to AWS. It's ready now for, for running. It's a really it's a really a, a very simple application now. It's just an S3 bucket with some. Mm -hmm. With, with, with an index of HTML file in it and a little bit of, uh, of scripting around it, um, it was very easy to make, and it will be a very. Oh, we hope that it will be a very lightweight application uh, that will uh, be much more user friendly than the old one, which uh, and also will be uh, much more easier to use on, on smart devices because <laughs> nowadays um, the, the whole application is to have to make data pictures, save it, and upload it. All the kind of stuff. But all of it, we want to fix it. It will be available Monday. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, so, um, if I could ask you the first formal question, Florin, um, could you tell me about how technologies help transform the, your platforms, particularly when it comes to working across uh, different countries? Yes. So, uh, as I was indicating, I will uh, uh, refer more to the EuroAccess, which is a uh, um, network for researchers for encouraging the mobility of the researchers and the exchange of information on uh, researcher uh, mobility. Part of this network, is, uh, uh, which is backed up by the European Commission, is uh, uh, participating in about 40 various countries, both European and European, offering the possibility for research companies to get in touch with potential researchers from all over the world and uh, putting them in contact for uh, offering job and uh, uh, putting in place various exchange programs. Initially, up to a few years ago, this, uh, the site that we were using was actually not a single site, were about 40 websites differently. Each member state that was participating in this program were having their own website, and the information was uh, quite often uh, uh, not synchronized. The researcher needed to check on multiple websites, so if one researcher from Japan would desire to come in Europe, he would have to check separately for France, Italy, Germany, and so on with the information quite often out of sync and outdated. Uh, a couple years ago, they managed to uh, negotiate politically a single solution where the information would uh, be maintained more uh, easier. And uh, uh, following this negotiation, uh, the decision was to maintain all the 40 websites with their uh, current uh, domain names, but at the same time use a single IT solution for providing the content. So, uh, uh, due to the constraints uh, that were present at the time in the data center of the Commission, it was not possible to host this site uh, in this place. So, practically, uh, websites that are not in the Europa.eu, it's not possible to use them to host them in the uh, data center. So, we had to uh, host them into a cloud solution. Uh, due to, uh, with the help of the teamwork in the cloud uh, uh, framework contract uh, activation and uh, uh, of our DevOps, we're able to put in production this site in the uh, uh, end of 2016, so about uh, one year and a half ago, uh, in Amazon Cloud. As a result, uh, uh, now there is a central information system that is providing the content for all the websites. The content is uh, synchronized since a single uh, database providing all the content, and it's much uh, easier for uh, uh, doing any changes or updates, uh, and uh, further, uh, it does offer a uh, better performance due to the closeness to the, to the users. So, uh, for example, in this case, with the user CDN, it's possible to get the content much easier and much faster in uh, the various countries around the world. So, uh, this uh, was a considerable uh, improvement to 
the previous situation where the content was hosted in the specific country and uh, access was done remotely for various geographical locations. So, with the support of uh, uh, the cloud in this case, it was possible to offer something that would not have been possible differently. Cool, uh, really fascinating answer, thank you. Um, Philip, can I maybe ask you about um, Lambda? And can you tell us about your experiences using Lambda with the um, UK National Archives? Sure. Oh, okay. We're actually working with that. <laughs> So, um, just to give you a bit of context, um, the, the, the work we did with the National Archives was the migration of the UK Government Web Archive from um, the previous supplier into, into AWS. So, the, the UK Government Web Archive is 20 years of web archives. It's over 4,800 websites. It totaled 120 terabytes at the time we uh, took over the, the, the archive. Those archives were stored in 100 megabyte um, web archive files. So, we have 1.2 million files. We didn't have an index of what was in those files, we just had the raw files. So the first challenge we had was moving the data. The previous supplier had, um, with the National Archives over, I think, a period of about six months, transferred the data to the National Archives in queue on two, two terabyte hard drives. And there was actually 72 two terabyte USB hard drives. So that was my first challenge. Um, how are we gonna get all that data into the cloud? I mean, the obvious thought was Snowball. Snowballs are pretty good. But getting the data from two terabyte hard drives into a snowball was a challenge. I ended up building two machines with um, uh, eight channels of USB that could run at full speed. We had 16 drives going at once, 10 gigabit per second connections to the snowballs, and it actually it worked. It took two weeks. We transferred the data. I generally work remotely. I go in in the morning, connect a lot of drives up, monitor the machines remotely, um, and after two weeks, we had two snowballs that were contained all the data. So. All the data sat there, and around that time, Amazon had launched the Snowball Edge, which I was quite excited about. We could use the Snowball Edge to run Lambda functions on the box, but I couldn't get any, because you don't just launch them. So how could we, how could we index this data in a, in a clever way? And I thought, we can actually use Lambda functions um, to actually, as the data hits Amazon S3, as a file gets written, we can run a Lambda function against it. And that's what we did. And we ended up um, running, um, it was over 1.2 million Lambda executions as the data transferred into S3. And it, it was a bit of a test, but it actually worked. Um, and we, uh, we indexed the data um, running, uh, well, 1.2 million Lambda functions, about 50,000 functions per hour um, in 24 hours. Now, previously, that would have had to have been done with a Hadoop job. The data would have had to be moved through EMR. And, and this way, it, we, we, we did it in rapid time. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what we did with Lambda. Um, and, well, I could go into numbers, but I think we'll save those for the end. Because the, the cost for doing it was astronomically low. Um. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, oh, you can hear me now. Um, Bert, mm -hmm. next question for you. Um, can you tell us how quickly your organisation can deploy uh, new capabilities now that you've moved to the cloud? Um, I'll very fast. I would say, like, at least it depends on, 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 on kinds of applications, at least four times or even, I mean, let's say, eight times faster than before. Like before, like uh, two, two months. Now, in, 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 in like the hard cases, it's like one week if I have to like to set up a lot of things or, or still have to test like new, new things. Um, I think that the main reasons why we are we, we were able to 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 have to, to really like cut down in, in that time. May, it will be the, uh, the tools and handles that, that AWS provides. Uh, AWS provides tools and handles that, that, that allow you to automate everything from running up servers, from setting up databases, um, platform as a service services, just like uh, Alexa search, all that kind of stuff. Everything is available. You have like uh, you have the, the, the scripting. You have, if you have like the scripting in place, if you have like an, an, a reference a reference architecture, that all that kind of like is like. How, how you build your applications, and once you have once you have that like scripted, uh, just if you have new things of new new functionalities that almost are uh, are um, complying with that reference architecture, just like in one day you can uh, set up uh, new applications. Another thing that uh, that really allows uh, us to shift fast is um, is uh, the platform as a services that that AWS uh, provides. Uh, examples there are the Elasticsearch or a Redis, a Redis cluster. Before uh, you have to think about how are we going to set it up, how are we uh, going to make sure that uh, everything keeps on running, that uh, 
backups are in place, uh, how are we going to restore, you all have to think about that. And now with the AWS, it's just, uh, no, you just like uh, with the CLI, start it, uh, plug it in, and you know that everything will be running and everything is managed from, from AWS out. So it really allows you to go much, much faster. That will be... Fantastic. Thanks very much. That's a great example. Um, um, Florian, if I can come back to you about um, citizen services. I wonder how um, citizen services have improved, um, particularly through the consolidation of the websites that you were talking about earlier on. Okay. So, uh, clearly during this uh, transformation of the websites, uh, uh, one of the main objectives was effectively uh, managing centralized data which is a big advantage, uh, both for the uh, people inserting the content of the editors, uh, for the researchers that have to look for the data, for the companies that have to publish their openings or look for potential candidates, and is in the end leading to an uh, uh, improvement of the research uh, and the research mobilities. Uh, just to give you a few numbers, uh, last month we had on, only on the central uh, European Commission side of the Euraccess, more than 1 million page views with uh, 100,000 uh, uh, dependent visitors. Uh, the registered users of the site are about 55,000 users, so 55,000 researchers and research companies that are actively participating and either looking for a new job position or offering research job positions. So this is uh, uh, effectively helping them on uh, getting in touch easier and uh, uh, maintaining, uh, maintaining the content, uh, uh, while at the same time uh, the, central, uh, uh, the central management of the, of the content is providing central information on the, the procedures and the needs that the researcher has to go through in order to move to another country, especially, for example, if you are referring to people arriving from outside Europe. Uh, the improvement of uh, this uh, mobility and uh, uh, international part of uh, uh, the innovation of the research is effectively impacting and is having an, uh, out, uh, an, uh, a positive effect on the growth of the economy. So just a few weeks ago, the European Commission published a report where it was indicated that uh, the research and innovation is uh, the part that is uh, re uh, responsible for two-thirds of the growth uh, of the economic growth. So you can imagine that having an improved researcher exchange and uh, scientific uh, uh, exchange at the international level is uh, having a positive impact on the growth in Europe, which is leading for the normal citizens to uh, more jobs and uh, uh, better life. So uh, that's a direct uh, effect for the usual citizen. Another uh, aspect that uh, uh, has to be taken into consideration is the cost. So by uh, lowering the cost, because with a single central uh, uh, infrastructure and IT solution, clearly the cost has been reduced to what has been before. And this is uh, uh, meaning that we can offer a better uh, value for the citizens' uh, money, for the taxpayers' money. So we are public administration, we are spending taxpayer money, and so we have to offer improved services. So if we manage to offer better uh, services with less money, this is clearly a big advantage to the citizens. Great, thank you very much. Um, Philip, can I ask you, um, earlier on you talked about the value of experimentation, and I wonder if you, could, if you could give us some other examples or another example of that. Yeah, so I mean that's one of the things I love about Amazon is that you can experiment. I mean the idea of having a Lambda function on, on SVM inject, uh, ingest on the snowballs was an experiment. I didn't know it would work. And we, we actually processed 1.1 million files. We only had a, a few that weren't processed due to the size. We then processed those on an EC2 instance. One of the reasons we won um, the tender for taking over the UK government web archive is we offered a full, um, full depth, full faceted search across the entire 10, 20 years of archives. And looking at the way people were doing it, it um, generally full text search indexing of web archives is done with Hadoop clusters. So not having really much experience with Hadoop clusters, I employed um, or contracted in a Hadoop contractor. Um, and initially we'd been quoted, it would probably take about two, two weeks to do the work. So that was reasonable, it was budgeted for. Um, but after those two weeks, he came back and told us he needed another eight. Um, unfortunately, we were launching in six, so we had a problem. <laughs> so with, with, with the experimentation that we've done with Lambda, I, 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 we didn't move any data from S3. We processed it directly in S3. And if you've got a 100 meg um, WARC file or web archive file, you, you don't, the, the web page is only bits of it. 
So you don't need to take the whole file um, and read it if, if you're only indexing certain content. We had a, a list of uh, my types that we were to index, of the obvious ones, PDF, doc, text, and then obviously HTML content. But a lot of the content in there was stuff that we got interested in, CSS, JavaScript, quite a lot of data that was out of scope. Um, so what we did, and I, I tasked our team internally, we got rid of the uh, hooded consultant, he wasn't very good, um, and we tasked, I tasked my team internally to do some out-of-the-box thinking, going, can we leave the data in S3 and still process it? And as it was, um, some of the very uh, good members of our team came up with a way of, of doing just that. We already had an index of everything that was in those files, but we didn't know what was inside the actual the content of each file. So we used the index that we'd already created to um, create a filter job. And we did that filtering job with 350 uh, EC2 instances, which we spot purchased. Um, and once that filtering job had finished, it then passed on to um, an indexing job. And I think it was uh, about 750 servers. And the jobs were actually running concurrently. Um, and we, 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 it was an experiment again. But within 10 hours, we actually did a full text search index into Elasticsearch of 120 terabytes of data. Um, and we actually processed 1.4 billion documents in those 10 hours. Um, and our team had seen only a few weeks before, the British Library posted some um, results about how they'd done um, with their Hadoop cluster on site in the British Library. They'd managed to record 10 million documents an hour. Well, we averaged uh, 144 million documents an hour. And actually, at some times, it was going up much higher than that because if it was just HTML content, they were indexing really, really quickly. So I've got a few more ideas up my sleeve of things like this out-of-the-box thinking that um, I'm not going to talk about just now, but this is what Amazon gives us, this ability to scale. Um, I've just requested 5,000 instances um, that I hopefully can run in Ireland for a, and a project that maybe I'll be set up on stage talking about this time next year. So uh, hopefully, now I've said that on camera, they'll let me have them. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, fantastic, it's, uh, super interesting. Um, Bert, can you um, can you tell us about? Can you share some of the specific workloads that you've um, that you've moved to the cloud, and what really are the benefits that you see from them? Right, it mainly are just um, business applications, right? A, a, a diverse range of business applications, but. Um, what I, what I would think really is the, 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 the great thing that we, we got out of moving to cloud would be um, that we have been able to um, respond very fast and eagerly to, to, to business needs. Um, uh, I remember oh, when we were still on the, on, on, on the old infrastructure, we started a project, the, the, the road control project that I, that I, that I mentioned before. Um, and we, we, we had like the vision now we have to digitalize that process because before the, the road controllers they were on the road uh, just with paper filling in all the things that they detected I had to go to the office then fill it in in an application or in forms and then in order to, to, to be able to, to work on it so um, we, we, we <coughs> there had a vision now we want to digitalize just digitalize that and we want the people on the road with the tablets that they can take pictures and it automatically gets sent to, to the back end which I, which I talked about before, uh, and they would save a lot of time. But when we started with, uh, with the development of the application, um, there was a lot of um, support for, for the application, and, and the user group was really like excited about, oh yeah, we're going to digitalize, we're going to do our work more efficient, we're going to be able to do uh, inspect better, uh, produce better roads for, for the end users. But uh, the, the enthusiasm very fastly faded away. Uh, that was mainly because uh, we, de we developed and uh, we had to ship it to our outsourcer, they put it in production. Um, there was time over that uh, to, to, to put things in, in production, but once it was running in production, there were like issues and uh, things would be different or, or this or that would be added. And it was like uh, at least like two months in order to get uh, like a request from the business in order to get them fixed. And it even went that far that um, that uh, we had some bugs in production that uh, were like fixed one week later. And it, was, it was hard, very hard for, for, for the business. And, 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 and people had to be on the road with the, actually, uh, in that time, other road with, with their paper because they would not really rely on, 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 on the application. So they were on the road with the, with the two things. And, and the project was like going into disaster because the people were like, oh, I'd like to leave the tablets home when I go with the paper because it, at least it works. Um, so and, and even going that far that the, like uh, the management of, of, of our agency, uh, so 
from time to time we have like meetings with the, with the, with the syndicates, at, at, uh, we represent the people at the, at the agency and the people working with the application are quite a big chunk of, us, of our agency and they, uh, the syndicates were really like complaining at management and this is impossible that you, you let the people on the road with paper and a tablet no, uh, that, that were really like complaints from syndicates and um, around, around just that time we, we, we had decided to, to move to cloud and uh, because it was an application that was in active development, it was like chosen the application just to go first to the cloud. And um, I can say that um, just in, in, in two or one, one or two months, when, when we moved the application to the cloud and really also made it cloud, no, not really cloud native yet, but already we, 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 we took leverage of the cloud. We, 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 we had all uh, uh, the automation in place in order to, to, be, to be able to deploy the application very fast. Um, just like if there was an issue, then the next day or, or two days later, that was solved in production, and really like the project revived again. The, the, the people really were like supportive again for the application. They, they started using the tablet, the tablet again, um, and uh, that that was really a, a, a remarkable, a remarkable thing that happened. And, 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 and even from management, then we heard that in the next meeting with the syndicates. Um, the syndicate really like gave like their compliments about how we addressed that that, that problem. That's like a, for management, that was a really remarkable thing because mostly the syndicates just complain and don't uh, <laughs> don't give my compliments to our management. That was one of the key things that a oh, very very good experience I had with, uh, with moving to cloud. Fantastic! That's just a great story. Thanks for telling us about that. Um, cool, um, Florian. Um, if I could ask you to talk about some of the measurable results that you've seen from the project. Yes, so, uh, well, one of the first measurable results is uh, the fact that we uh, did measure on uh, cost reduction. So compared to what we had before, uh, where we had 40 different information systems managed by different uh, teams, or teams in all the countries, having a single one is clearly a bigger improvement. Uh, furthermore, uh, by uh, using the elasticity provided by the cloud, we were able to properly control the cost. So from the beginning, uh, the team worked on uh, uh, providing an uh, automated uh, infrastructure management. So we have uh, at the moment about 45 Cloudflare distributions, one for each of the states, but not only to the domain, because we have still have 40 domains each one point of the same infrastructure and send the content in a personalized uh, regional uh, uh, specific approach, let's call it. Uh, and uh, this, uh, everything has to be managed. So uh, from the beginning, we used uh, the cloud formation for uh, creation of everything, for uh, deploying, uh, managing. Uh, one of the targets was uh, effectively as well using the elasticity for reducing the cost, okay. not targeting only and uh, along the year elasticity, so targeting big events because there are a large number of events along the year, but as well during the day. So it was possible to have uh, uh, multiple times during the day, increment automatically and decrement automatically based on auto-scalability, the size of the infrastructure that is used for selling the web pages. And uh, uh, this is considerably helping uh, with the cost. Uh, we observe during the day uh, different patterns of users, so most of the time we have a peak uh, uh, in the morning and in the evening where researchers are commuting. That's the moment that was perceived in the trends as the biggest moment they are looking and contributing to the community. So during this period of the day, we might go up to five or six machines that are actually serving the request, while usually we have only two. Uh, reserving the capacity for the two, uh, we managed to cut further the cost uh, with, uh, I think it's about 30% that is uh, the standard offering from Amazon and uh, with the offering of paying by the second from, uh, for the EC2 machines, this uh, helped to pay for the additional capacity exclusively for two hours per day for about 100 days per year. This uh, led to a uh, cost reduction of about 40 to 50 percent to what would have been the cost of a similar infrastructure without elasticity. So this, I think, is a uh, real uh, uh, good uh, uh, result, and uh, this is, is very clear. Further, uh, since uh, uh, one, one of the uh, big advantage of using the, the cloud was the possibility to have access to innovation. So our uh, uh, team was uh, had the possibility to experiment and to uh, 
uh, had quite large flexibility in uh, doing everything that they needed to do. So they could implement a solution, check it, experiment with it, destroy it, and take it over again multiple times, even during the same day, which effectively allowed for uh, having a uh, uh, very good solution in a very short time. So the time for delivering this full solution for uh, your access site, in this case, was only about one month and a half. So as soon as the, uh, the framework contract with the cloud was signed, and about one month and a half later, the site was already live in production. So it's a very short time for delivering an, uh, such a solution, which is a very complex one because it's, as was indicating, we have a, a large number of uh, uh, CDN, we have uh, uh, scalability, we have uh, AC2 machines, we have uh, RDS, we have uh, Elastic Cache, uh, we have AFS, we have uh, a lot of other technology, everything contributing together. So everything has to be glued together and make working properly in order to make sure that everything will, will work as desired. Uh, that's one another big uh, uh, important uh, uh, result, the flexibility and the possibility to innovate, which is not always as easy in uh, another specific situation. So uh, this, uh, I, I would say, is one big uh, outcome of the usage of the cloud in, uh, in our case, uh, effectively having the team uh, being able to uh, use new technology and innovate. That's very important for us. That's, that's really interesting. And um, I, I was fascinated by some of the figures that you, you mentioned there. And uh, it, it really shows the impact and the fact that you can innovate around those. Thank you for sharing. And, and Philip, I know that when we were talking earlier on, you were mentioning some, some really interesting facts and figures um, similar to, to what Florian talked about, I wonder if you could take us through a few of those. Yeah, so my astronomically low cost for creating the index of 120 terabytes of data was um, $25. <laughs> that was for, what was it, 1.2 million Lambda executions. Um, now there is a free tier, so I think that's why it was so low, but nevertheless, it, it, it blew us away. I, I had to go back and look at the bill a few times and go, was that really the cost? <laughs> Um, which then obviously then led me on to the second experiment, which was also very, very low. So the cost of running 1,000 servers for 10 hours, although the numbers sort of fluctuated as we stopped doing the filtering job, um, was actually, because they were spot purchased, we got a 70% reduction in cost. Um, so they were, I think they were R, R2, for it, no, R4X large servers, but they, just, they actually cost us, looking back at the bill, and again, I had to double check it, $187. Um, and I think we were paying about it was less, about three cents an hour, and they're normally thirty-three cents an hour, something like that. Um, so I kept requesting more. I kept ringing up the support. Can we have more? Can we have more? Because I wanted to see how far we could push it. And I must admit, we did experiment a few times, and we killed Elasticsearch uh, many times. Um, but that's where you know the Amazon Elasticsearch service was really handy. We we, we spun up a really large. Um, what was it? We used 136 hours of R4-4X large over the 10 hours. So I can't remember how many servers I put in there. But um, we just expanded the cluster until we kind of found we could hit it about that hard, and then we went for the full job. Um, but that only cost us $237 for the 10 hours that we were at that cluster size, and then we scaled it back down to the one that runs the archive um, today. So there's loads. I mean, when you're doing a big data processing this big, you, there's lots of numbers we can pull out. I think the thing for me, um, I was reading a book the other day and it talked about the infinite compute power of the cloud. And it is, it, we, for us, we can, as long as you let us have it, um, then it, it, essentially we can just keep throwing machines at, at problems. But the one that I've sort of been reflecting on as past life running data centers and net apps and, and having a limited storage is I don't worry about storage anymore. You know, we just keep throwing data at it. I think the, the archive has grown by 30 terabytes in the last year. But it doesn't matter, our fidelity of archives is, is, is better, we can go deeper. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it's this whole concept. I, I can throw 120 terabytes of data at, 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 in, into S3 in Ireland and have it automatically appear in London as a backup. And then I can actually then make it go somewhere else into Glacier. And it, it, it's this capability that means I run a very small DevOps team to manage some really, really large data sets. I mean, I think the hits we get on the UK government web archive, which is mainly Google and Baidu and all the crawlers, is about, it's about 70 million hits a month, um, which we average, we, we, we take away all of those. I think we get about 500 million users a month using the service. A lot of the UK government website, when sites are, are, are taken out, they actually redirect through to the archive automatically. 
There's lots of government departments that are all merged over the years into gov, gov, gov.uk. So all of those sites, they're all in there and people are still using them um, and through our service. Um, we've recently, we're chatting to the Welsh Government and um, that's another contract we've just recently won. And they were saying that since we launched the, the full text search across the UK National Archives, their actual request to their archiving service had dropped because people could find stuff through, through the platform. So, yeah, there's many stats and there's been sort of many successes and, yeah, there's lots of uh, more exciting ideas that I, I want to try and, and play with and, and see. And that's the, I think that's the thing, it, you can just play. You can have these moonshot ideas that you sort of throw out there and, you know, if they don't work, you haven't actually spent very much money. Um, the whole concept of running 1.2 million functions and it only costing $25 is, is a bit crazy. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing so much with that. Um, but I'd, I'd like to ask you the, the last formal question and then we'll open to the audience. Um, can you tell us how moving to the cloud has affected the technology and the different companies that you're working with? Um, in technology? Um, well, we change a bunch of technology, but there's different things that, that, that change in technology. I think in, uh, when we now have moved to the cloud, um, our technology is much more up to date than it used to be before. Um, before um, I remember that we had um, middleware or machines operating systems that we like kept expanding lifetime of them in order uh, we, we didn't even want to touch it. We uh, we were afraid of touching it, and, and things eventually sometimes exploded in uh, in, my, in our faces. And with AWS, it's, it's very different. Um, you, AWS provides. Um, a very up-to-date uh, uh, technology. Um, you, if you also go cloud native, um, you, you make sure that you're, you're uh, not dependent on, 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 soft, on, on software versions to a, to a, to a, cer to a certain level. Um, for, example, for instance, also the, the AWS, um, with some delay, but, but relatively fast, they, um, they bring uh, middleware versions into production, like uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, you have like already the 6.2 uh, there. But before, we would like keep sitting on 1.5, just keeping it alive, keeping it alive, and then be able to yes, they bring it out. They prepare the work for us. We don't have to invest ourselves in it. Um, we just uh, if, if AWS releases it, uh, releases it. Um, they also have like a, a migration workflow for it, and then if we have time, and then. then and, 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 and we just have to follow that, that, that migration and that's all the work we have to do before we have to set it up ourselves and, and investigate with it how we, how we migrate and that's not, not, not the issue anymore. That's, uh, that's one thing about technology, also the technology changes. You, you, when you go cloud native, you, instead of uh, uh, setting up your own uh, web services, you just use S3 and, and just forget about uh, all the things that you had to set up before. Um, the companies we, use, uh, we work with, um, before we used, um, for the, for the, especially for the for the for, uh, for the operation side, one big outsourcer, uh, we changed from from, from that to um, to an AWS or AWS AWS reseller and um, and an in-house uh, operations team. Um, we think that is is, is, is much better. We, we had that experience already with uh, insourcing our our development teams. That's uh, mainly because uh, we find. Um, in source development teams, which are then uh, small contractors that we contract and we build like teams around them. Um, we think that, 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 that those people are much more devoted to, to, to the agency, to, to, the, to the business goals of the, of the agency. Um, that they really work for the agency, they are dependent on the agency for, for, for their work. Not, not just, they don't have like to, um, they, they, there's not the, uh, the overhead of a, of a big outsourcer which has his, his own goals. No, those, are those, those small contractors, they really work for, for AWV. Um, another thing that I see there that's, that's, that's really amazing is that the, 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 those people are, uh, they are much more, um, because, because actually uh, when we moved away from the outsourcer, I just like picked one out of the outsourcer and then got it, got, got it working for me. And uh, like the job satisfaction is a lot higher because they, now they, they, they see that the things that they do for the agency, they see the results of, of what they do and um, uh, yeah, they, they really see like the impact on the citizens' life of what they are doing. Where, where before they just not, they didn't have all that kind of stuff. So that's like more or less, uh, you know, sum up of uh, the companies, how we change the working with companies. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. So, um, 
those were the formal questions I wanted to ask, and, and really I'd like to open it to the audience now. Does anybody, does anybody out there have any questions for our panelists? Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, um, I, uh, uh, it was amazing to hear you all. Uh, you have some great stories to tell, so I'm really inspired by, by some of the, the key facts that you, you show, uh, especially the YouTube, because mm -hmm. you can understand that I don't know how many millions of functions you run, but it was a very low cost. But um, I came from Portugal, and, and uh, there uh, we have an issue uh, with the public sector, which is um, they need to uh, know uh, how much uh, they are going to spend uh, to buy something. So, so for them, cloud uh, <coughs> is really scary because they cannot predict the cost. I know that probably in 99% of the cases we're going to reduce costs. <coughs> but that is not enough. They need to be sure because they do RFPs and then when they buy, they will not, will not pay more than it was uh, defined. You know. So how do you manage that in, 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 in countries where you, you, you are providing these services? Because I really like to understand and to explain to our customers, which are public sector, there is a solution for that. They could use uh, uh, the citizens' money uh, way better uh, and save money. And so I would like to understand that. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> I think the basic, if anybody couldn't hear about the basic crux of the question was um, uh, can the guys give any advice on, on how not only you can save money, but how you can keep those costs constant and controlled over time? Would that be a fair summary of the question? I, I would say. Uh, I really uh, would like to have some good arguments to talk to the public sector guys in Portugal, for instance, to tell them how they can procure and buy cloud services, uh, 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 because they are very limited today. They need to procure. They are. Uh, they prefer to invest in capex and not opex. Um, so how the government can actually procure those cloud yeah, services? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, <coughs> what I would say there. Um, we work with framework contract, just uh, not not just with fixed limits and all that kind of stuff, but like a framework contract that we, that that we said, oh, it's not we don't sell it in the market. We just we at AWP we, we, we like to, to hop on uh, work of, of of other people that have done for us, and and there are like framework contracts which are then allowing um, uh, AWS resellers to offer their services. Uh, what we do is more or less. Um, estimate what we are going to use in a year um, and we can do that quite good so we, we already run it run in, a, in, a, in, a, in aws and we, we we see the work that's that's coming and we are just like taking an, an extra percentage on, on what we expect to, to spend in a year um, and then we um, get like the offer and just like go to the, the, whole, the whole flow of getting the, the money fixed and then be able to, to, pay, to pay the bills um, <coughs> for us, that's not really an, uh, an issue. But uh, what I really would like to say there is that um, AWS allows you to, to save costs. Uh, oh, cl going cloud will, will allow you to, to save costs. But because if you go cloud and you really go good into the cloud, you will, you will become much more responsive to the business, and your business will notice that, and they will become more hungry. I don't know if, 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 if you if you if you understand what I, what I mean because. Um, uh, they see now that IT is really helping the business and, uh, and is able to help the business and they will send more work to you to, to, get, it, to, 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 to get fixed. So they, they have higher demands for you and eventually your cost will, will rise. Uh, I can say that now we're not still at the cost of, uh, of our old outsourcer to, 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 run, to run IT, but we are, we are getting there. We, we, the, the cost is going up, but, but we are delivering much, much more value for that cost. So I think that, that also like the management of, of, of the people of, of, the, of the agencies you are working with have to like uh, understand that clouds not only uh, will save costs, but it will allow them to, to, to work more efficiently, to, to bring better services to, 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 to the citizens in the end. That's, that's, that will be my thing. 
Thank you very much, Bill. Philip, yeah. I think it looks like you wanted to. Make. I've got some couple of comments on that. Um, is that yeah, it's working. Um, for, for us, all of our public sector contracts are fixed price, and, and so the, that very question was my initial challenge when we took on such a large contract with the National Archives. My CFO was constantly asking me how much is it going to cost. So I had to kind of guess based on the traffic stats they've given us, and I had to pretty much design um, a traditional model um, and a traditional system to, to, to manage with that, 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 that capacity. As it was, because of some of the sort of experiments we did, the costs for doing certain things that we budgeted for were a lot less. Um, but it was very difficult, and, and it's still difficult to this day because it does auto scale. And if something happens in the UK that causes a lot more traffic to come to our site, then we have to manage those costs. And the way I manage that is I use a third party external service that, that gives me real time monitoring of the, of the billing. And, yeah, uh, cloud health, actually. <laughs> I went through a whole load of, uh, I, I tried a few um, when I was uh, in reInvent, and um, that's the one I ended. But it's it really useful, and the, and the way we also manage costs is I split every AWS account down to customer, um, or actually the live environment. Um, so we can manage the costs based on, on, on that. Um, and yeah, it, it is a challenge. Um, it's just commodity at the end, yeah. it's like if you tap and, and you get and you pay. I mean, one of the ways we, we, we've cut costs as well is we, we now know what capacity we need to run the, the, the actual EC2 instances that run the actual the web, the website of the, the UK Government Web Archive, and we've reserved instance that. So we, we've committed up front to pay for three years, and we know now we've got those for three years. We, we pay per month, but we know that is a very set price that is, is budgeted for. Um, and the same with the Elasticsearch cluster, we now know what capacity we need to run Elasticsearch for the number of users that we get. The cost savings come in at things where we didn't really account for it in terms of all of our social media archiving platform runs in Lambda, and as you've seen with the Lambda pricing, it's pretty neg negligible. The cost is some months zero um, to run our, our entire social media archiving platform because we don't exceed the one point, I think it's one million um, free Lambda functions you get. So um, there are ways of saving costs, but it, it does take a lot of, uh, quite a lot of work and an understanding of how the cloud actually um, operates. But you, you still take the risk of estimating yeah. Providing the price if the, the, the cost goes higher. It, it, yeah, that, that is a risk. You are going to lose money, not yeah. the government. Not the government, yeah. No. So they've outsourced that to us. But you know, I, I have to think of original, ide original ideas to keep those costs um, low. So, would, you, would, you agree, yeah. would you agree that the, the way the, the IT services are procured right now is it's not uh, the best way? No, not at all. I mean, I've been asked for a cost per website archive <coughs> recently in a tender. And, well, um, there's some websites that are massive and there's some that are you know, tiny. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I just uh, something very, very small because the already cover quite uh, uh, good. On our case, I think uh, since I'm not dealing directly with the contract on part, I cannot offer you directly all the, all the details, but we are working with framework contracts as well. And uh, from time to time, I know that my colleagues are dealing uh, from the cloud team that is using all the part contract on part activating specific contracts for a specific amount of money which are out of this budget allocated as a maximum uh, uh, top limit for the framework contract which means that they activate regularly additional amounts of money on those uh, on this bigger contract uh, actually this is leading to some uh, uh, situations have to be taken into consideration for example uh, when uh, I need to reserve a capacity uh, if I reserve the capacity for a full year, I have to uh, synchronize with my colleagues because it might be that a certain that moment in the current specific contract there is not enough budget in order to cover that uh, reserve of capacity. So it, it involves some synchronization, some uh, uh, interactions. Uh, further, what I would recommend as well is uh, uh, tagging proper resources, especially if you are providing services for multiple customers. So uh, in many cases, uh, you will have to provide them uh, information in the actual consumption in an OPEX approach and with a proper tagging you'll be able to do it. Without this uh, it's going to be very difficult. And I, I'd, I'd add, just to finish that, that in, in AWS we, we have a team that spends a lot of time trying to collect that best practice from different governments around the world and, and help governments to share it between them so they can learn how, how different people have found solutions to that sort of problem. They can put you in touch with the right person to, uh, to talk to about that. And we've got about four minutes left, so if anybody else has another question, I think it'd be, we've got just about enough time to answer it. Does anybody have a question? Great stuff. Thank you very much, Patrick. So, two questions, I think. Um, the first one, uh, do you all have a single cloud policy? So a single cloud provider. And the second one is, um, how much do you trust uh, 
uh, your cloud, the data in the cloud, and do you still keep a copy of your data somewhere else, or is it are you already mature that you just trust it so much as you can? Yeah, you don't need it. Certainly for the National Archives, we, 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 we transfer the data to them. I mean, it is the UK National Archives, we can't lose it. That does then end up in vaults in queue. And that's the way they operate for some of our other clients. We, we, we do trust it. Yeah. I just make sure I've got lots of copies. Um, I've also got MFA delete, so no one can delete without going into our safe. Um, delete any of the data that is part of the archives. And um, I transfer it around the world a lot. So yeah. there are many copies. Um, yeah. We also... Um we rely, rely on AWS to, to, keep, to, to keep store of the data. We don't have nothing on site, nothing. In our case, uh, uh, we do rely on AWS as well on the, for uh, the data the websites are there. The data is public. Uh, occasionally, we do have some backups uh, for some specific uh, projects because they are used in the continuous integration uh, and the continuous testing. So we do need some specific copies for development purposes. <laughs> but the real backup and all the data is there. So it's, uh, and we deployed uh, clearly from the beginning and uh, oriented to a zero downtime using uh, multiple available zones and uh, all the other stuff. And uh, the other one, the uh, single cloud provider. Was Single cloud provider? Uh, or maybe multiple clouds. Huh? You don't need to mention any names. Just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so maybe I can answer. So, uh, actually, currently we are using three different cloud providers. So, we are not using a single one. Uh, we do use mainly AWS at the moment for the services that are offered are the better fit to what, what we desire to have in place. But from the beginning, we uh, focused on the next strategy. So that was one of the important points of having in place because due to the uh, typical uh, approach of framework contracts, we have no information if in the future the same cloud provider will be available. So one of the important points for uh, us organization was effectively having an uh, exit strategy that will allow us either to move back to data center or move to another cloud provider in the future. So I hope this is answering to. For us also, uh, we use multiple cloud, cloud providers. Uh, we use mainly AWS for, for running our uh, uh, really all, 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 all our, our hard work, uh, workload. But, but for instance, uh, in the road business, and, uh, Google has some very good uh, map services and APIs about all, all the kind of stuff. And really, uh, why not? It's just there. Take it. And that's really what we do. Take the best of the, of, of the market. For us, we, we, we took a, a decision at a board level to concentrate mainly on, on Amazon because we can leverage some of these unique services that we don't get with other cloud providers. In the past, we did actually use multiple providers, but I, I actually found the reliability of some of the other ones not very, not as good as Amazon, shall we say. Um, from a data point of view, it is something I'm just considering is putting data, the actual raw data in, a, in another cloud. Thank you very much for the question and thanks guys for the answers. Um, so, we're in perfect timing. The clock is flashing telling us that the time is up for this session. If anybody had any other questions then I guess we'll be here for a few minutes um, after the session closes. Thank you very much indeed for attending. Thanks for your questions and thank you especially to our panel members, to Florent, to Bert and to Philip. Really appreciate you joining us today. Thanks a lot.